Mashed potatoes are the rescue plan of every American dinner. Meat too dry? Mashed potatoes fix it. On Thanksgiving alone, Americans consume over 65 million pounds. But most don't come from anyone's home kitchen. One plant in Ohio produces 136 million pounds per year, turning raw potatoes into sealed trays in just four hours. How do they keep the easiest dish to ruin consistently smooth at such massive scale? Here's a kitchen truth nobody warns you about. Mashed potatoes are the easiest dish to destroy. You've done it. One minute you're mashing, the next you've got wallpaper paste. The culprit is starch. Potato cells are packed with starch granules. Cooking makes them absorb water and swell. Eventually, cells burst. That released starch creates the creamy texture we want. But the window between creamy and gluey is razor thin. Too much starch and you get paste. Too little and you get dry crumbles that won't hold together. At home, you mash maybe two pounds. You can feel when texture shifts. You know when to stop. Now imagine controlling that same delicate balance with 500,000 pounds every single day. That's the problem factory engineers face. And they've solved it in ways that would surprise most home cooks. In 1747, Hannah Glass published the first recorded mashed potato recipe. Boil, peel, mash with milk, butter, salt. That formula hasn't changed in nearly 300 years. What changed is scale and precision. Glassa used whatever potatoes she found. Factories choose exactly one variety, russet. There's science behind that choice. Potatoes fall into two types. Waxy ones hold shape when cooked. Terrible for mashing. Starchy russets do the opposite. Their cells separate easily when heated, creating fluff without aggressive force. Break a cooked russet and it crumbles like dry cake. That's what you want before mashing begins. Russets also absorb more fat, meaning richer flavor. Eight trucks arrive at Bob Evans Lima, Ohio plant daily. Each carries 50,000 pounds. By evening, most will be mashed. Speed defines everything inside this factory. A full truckload transforms from raw potatoes to packaged product in about four hours. That's not just efficiency, it's quality control. Potatoes oxidize, they brown, they lose moisture by the hour. Every delay degrades the final product. The journey covers nearly a third of a mile inside the plant. Washing, steam peeling, optical inspection, dicing, blanching, cooking, mashing, filling, chilling. Three shifts run around the clock, seven days a week. 400 employees keep the lines moving continuously. The daily numbers get absurd. 500,000 pounds processed. That's equivalent to 250,000 family dinners, leaving one building every 24 hours. Warehouse turnover happens in 48 hours or less. From Ohio dirt to your refrigerator in just days. Everything we've covered explains why the right potatoes arrive fast. It doesn't explain why factory mash never turns gluey, while home cooks using identical russets fail constantly. The secret is a ricer plate. Factories don't pound potatoes like you do at home. Cooked potatoes get pushed through a metal plate with hundreds of small holes. Each passes through exactly once. Traditional mashing hits the same spots repeatedly. Every impact bursts more cells, releases more starch. That's how glue happens. The ricer works differently. One pass, uniform pieces, minimal damage. Potatoes exit like thick spaghetti strands falling into the mixing tank below. Three sixteenths inch each. Small enough to feel smooth. Structured enough to hold together. Butter isn't just flavor in factory mashed potatoes. It's protective armor. Here's what most home cooks get wrong. 
they add butter after mashing, once starch is exposed and vulnerable. Factory protocol reverses that order. Butter and cream go in first, while potatoes are still hot. Fat molecules coat the starch before it absorbs excess water. Coated starch cannot turn gummy. It's physically blocked. Mixing batches run around 2,000 pounds each. But potatoes are natural products. Every batch differs in moisture and starch content. Operators adjust dairy ratios in real time, reading texture as it develops. The ingredient list reveals the strategy. Potatoes, milk, butter, soybean oil, salt, natural flavor, monoglycerides. That last ingredient keeps fat and water from separating. Here's what surprises people about factory mashing. They do less of it than you'd expect. Overmixing is the enemy. Every rotation bursts cells. Every burst leaks starch. Electric mixers at home make this mistake dangerously easy. A few extra seconds crosses the line. Factory sensors monitor texture throughout the process. The target isn't perfectly smooth. Classic American mashed potatoes carry intentional texture. Creamy on the tongue, but recognizably potato. Not paste, not soup. Temperature matters too. Potatoes enter mixing around 160 degrees. Too hot and starch keeps breaking down. Too cold and fat solidifies before coating. The finished product folds over itself slowly, like cooling lava finding its final shape. Sealed trays enter a spiral rapid chilling system immediately after filling. For the next 75 minutes, they travel a winding multi-level conveyor path held at 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Hot mash at 160 degrees drops below 40 in just over an hour. Rapid chilling accomplishes three things. It stops starch from breaking down further. It closes the window where bacteria could multiply and it locks texture exactly where operators set it. The scale defies intuition. 136 million pounds annually means roughly 372,000 pounds daily. That translates to 185,000 individual containers, leaving this single facility every day. Each one travels the same spiral journey before shipping out within 48 hours. Next time you pull a tray from the refrigerator, microwave it for five minutes, and scoop it onto your plate, you'll understand what just happened. Not magic. Not shortcuts. 400 people running three shifts transformed 50,000 pounds of raw potatoes into what's melting on your tongue right now. All of it within four hours. Farm to fork, with precision, no home kitchen can replicate. So which one's sitting in your fridge right now? The tray or the flakes?